Good morning. Good morning, viewers. Good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, I have a show for you guys today with Costa Grammatis. Uh, this, this guy is a former SpaceX scientist, and uh, he has been trying to produce these 3D printed masks at scale. So uh, we are on like the second week of official quarantine. Costa, how you doing, man? Doing great. Ready to have a conversation with a human being that's not my partner. <laughs> it's exciting. Right, right. Man, like the, the it's, it's crazy, man. Just like uh, what what's going to happen here with all of us just in isolation, just the mental health implications uh, and everything else, right? Of just like not being able to, to go outside and go to the mall or go hang out with our friends like in a public place. It's just crazy. But I'm glad everybody's doing it because it's essential to making sure that we all stay happy and healthy in the long run. A little sacrifice today for better tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and, and and so viewers, as you guys are tuning in, uh, I have the phone lines open, uh, numbers on the screen here two one four eight five six two three eight nine. Any point uh, during this conversation, feel free to chime in, dial in, and uh, have a conversation with us because we're going to be getting into some uh, some heavy topics. So, Costa, why don't we start off with a little bit about your background? I kind of introduced you. You are the CEO and founder of a company called Sidecar Lab. Uh, so, uh, and you know. Uh, my wife actually introduced us. So actually you went to school with my wife. You guys were in the same graduating class and she saw this Facebook post that you made of you having these, this 3D printed mask on your face. So I can uh, show that in the overlay here. It's that 3D printed mask here. And uh, just your plans for like trying to get that into as many healthcare workers as possible. And we just thought that was such a noble, noble thing that you're doing and just super interesting, especially right now. So uh, I'll let you kind of take it away from there. Uh, so my background is in science and engineering. I, I did graduate with your, with your wife. She's fantastic. We were friends for a long time. Um, and uh, my, my interest is, is prototyping R&D in engineering. And that's what my company does at Sidecar Lab. Um, we build things for people. A lot of inventors come to us. A lot of companies are like, we want you to design this, make this. Um, I love what I do. Everything from satellites space to laser guns for the discovery channel we we build a lot of things and uh all, a lot of our clients canceled their contracts uh right when covid struck so i've not a lot to do and one thing that i noticed is that all these people are putting all these you know diy 3d printed things out there um from masks to guard face guards to even respirators uh or ventilators that are being designed by community. And uh, wow, this is fantastic. You do a little deep dive though, and like, where are the facts? Like, where, what is, what's the, what, what is the truth here? Because a lot of people have sort of opinions on, on the best way forward. And, and when you have a big group of people designing um, in all these different directions, it's hard to know what's the best mask or most effective mask. And you have people on the front lines who are trying to make a decision. Uh, or even makers who are trying to make something, um, it's hard to get the best information. So I can't take credit for making masks per se, like designing them, rather went through all the mask designs out there, you know, from this is like the first one to this is the more recent one and compared it against the, the standard N95, which is what we're trying to replace. These are what are in short supply across hospitals and around the world. Um, and put together a protocol on how to how to uh, design and print masks in a repeatable way so that anybody can sort of take this information and do what they want with it. It's been it's been certainly a crowdsourced effort. I take no credit for being like the sole um, I did all this. It's more like aggregating all of the information that's already there, adding my own research and details and making sure people know the best way forward. And we're still learning every day because that document, which you can you can check out at costa.is slash COVID, um, K-O-S-T-A slash I-S, or dot I-S. Um, that document's changing every hour as we learn new things and continue the research and development effort. It's drone on about masks. I've learned so much in the last week. 
Wow. Wow. So, um, no, I, I love what you said. That. I mean, it's a, it's a community effort, uh, definitely. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask an obvious question here. Uh, I'm setting you up for it because I know the answer, but I know the viewers don't. So, so like with the N95 mask, you wear it once, you throw it away. So you got to keep on 3D printing masks or how does this work? So N95s uh, are designed to be disposable. This thing, you're supposed to put it on, it filters out very small particles by the virus, and you're supposed to chuck it. And there are new protocols that have been developed that are allowing people to reuse these using like some, there's some papers that came out that, that were like put it in a bag with some water, throw it in the microwave and you'll kill all the viruses on it and bacteria. Another is like Duke University came out with this crazy protocol where you have this big room filled with a, a certain chemicals that like aerosolizes and lands on the mask kills everything. So there's all these different ways to um, uh, sterilize the mask, but for the most part, they're supposed to be disposable, and we're not really sure. It's, you know, it's it's challenging to 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 solve that problem. The 3D printed masks. The idea behind them is like you have this rigid frame, much like a respirator. Um, I'm sure you've seen those respirators with like the things on the side. You have the frame, and then you screw in a new mask, uh, a new filter on it. Um, the idea here is that you, we find some filter material that can do the job um, of, of, I don't want to get one that's already made. Um, we find some filter material that can um, be, be made to fit in the, in the center of it, and you replace this uh, whenever, you're, whenever the mask is uh, you know, it's kind of used. So every day you would just pop, out, pop this filter out, get a new one, and then put it back in. And that's that's kind of the idea. And you can sterilize these, you can dump them in uh, isopropyl or bleach, and uh, they're not gonna be sterile, they're gonna just be different, decontaminated. Um, I have to stress something that these masks are sort of your plan C or D. This is like the mask of last resort. It is um, not the best thing to be using in the world. And I think everybody should know that. This isn't the panacea, the solution for people who don't have masks. It's like, we can't get any more masks. We can't revitalize our current N95 mask. Nobody has a mask. It's, this is better than uh, wrapping uh, a handkerchief around your face or a cotton t-shirt or something along those lines. Got it, got it. No, I appreciate that disclaimer so people don't take it as a... Uh as gospel that this is like, this is the best mask. Um, so it's plan C, but you know, when you have no mask, this is, this is going to be great, right? Yes. And, and that's, and that's kind of what I, what I want to stress to people. All of these DIY ventures are not something that they haven't been tested to the rigorous standards that medical devices have been tested. They have um, all the claims that they make have to be taken with like copious amounts of grains of salt a lot of people are making assumptions about the efficacy of a mask like this um and there's limited testing that you can do like for example um there's two really important parts of the mask one is how it fits on your face the seal that you get and then also the filter material and filter media that you're using um, those are the two most important things if the filters doesn't uh, filter out a small enough size particle viruses will just pass right through it if the mask doesn't fit well, the, uh, the air will penetrate from the side. So you can put it on your face, and if there's a hole in the side, air is going to take the path of least resistance, and you're not protected at all. So those are the two. Those are the two most important things we're designing for. Um, N95 masks in particular are actually uh, specifically fitted to uh, people's faces. They they can take up. It's, it's pretty challenging to make sure you get a really good seal here. Is, is, it, is um, it one size fits all or, or it's not? They have like small, no, medium, no. large type thing. They got multiple sizes and, and they actually, most people take a class, learn how to fit the mask. Uh, the way they test is you put a mask on, just try to fit a mask to your face, and they'll put you in a, a little steam hood and they'll spray uh, sugar water in there, so like an aerosol mist of sugar water. And if you can smell the sugar, that means the mask is not fitting. Oh wow! So uh, that's how you test it. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's so, how you test the fitment of the mask. Yes. Wow. Wow. So, so your your plan right now is to try to 
the the problem with with three D printing, right, is uh most three D most people that have three D printers, right, and not on, on a commercial level, like you can't print them in bulk. Like it, it takes it takes so long to print up to do one project, right? How long does it take to to print a mask on a traditional three D printer? Uh, I got three masks printing. It takes twenty hours. So we've made small, medium, and large sizes for different size faces. Twenty um, hours. Twenty hours for three. It's just not something that's supposed to be bulk. It's not supposed to be something that your people. Some people are printing things and trying to work with hospitals to get them in there. But the idea behind this is rural America um, okay. is is already seeing a shortage of supply, and you know. A community college might have 3D printers, and you can go help a few people in need. Um, the idea is that uh, people can download these files, read the protocol, help themselves, help their friends and nurse nurse friends, doctor friends, things like that. But you know, most of these big hospitals with thousands of employees, um, they could certainly benefit from this. I'm not saying they they wouldn't benefit, but but the hope is that they can get actual good masks as soon as possible right so the, N90, the n95 being the gold standard there right yeah yep. got it yeah and, and uh you know it just seems like uh it seems like that that shortage i mean it's just going to get worse uh, unfortunately that is what it's looking like but um but yeah so t t tell me a little bit more about about your background man so what are some of the what are some of the other things that you guys are i, I saw you had a post today that you're actually asking for uh, is that a ventilator that you're asking for to reverse engineer? Yeah, so there's a, so I feel pretty confident that the design for this is, is pretty mature. And so let, the, let it out in the world, working with a number of doctors and university students um, who are kind of testing it, giving feedback, incorporating all that, uh, yeah. making little tweaks and changes. So I'm like, what's, what's next? What can we work on next? Uh, we've talk, heard about a shortage of ventilators. And... Um, I have been pretty critical of the DIY ventilator movement, um, just because those machines are very complicated, generally speaking. And um, when somebody makes a design that's supposed to be kind of DIY for a ventilator, it's a pretty risky undertaking. Um, right. And most of, most of the projects don't have like a bill of materials. Like you can't really go buy things to go build a ventilator. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, very easily, like for example, the MIT project. I mean, I'm so thrilled that they're taking it on. But um, you need a motor, a special motor with an encoder in it. You need all sorts of electronics to make it work. You need, they have like, the first thing you see is the chassis for it, which is this beautiful acrylic box for this ventilator. Um, and it's cut out of, you need a laser cutter. That's like step one. You need a laser cutter to, <laughs> or a CNC wow. router to, to cut out the plastic. So there are other designs out there um, that are a little bit simpler. There's a company um, called, it's called uh, Vortran Medical, and they have a ventilator called the Go To Vent. And it's supposed to be sort of a disaster specific ventilator that you essentially plug in um, oxygen and it's powered by the oxygen itself. It needs no motors, needs no electricity, just sort of has a, a mechanical system that kind of pumps air in and lets it out. And, um, it has two knobs that allow you to control the pressure and the volume of air um, and the rate, things like that. And uh, that company, unfortunately, they, they ramped up the production like 100,000 a week or something along those lines, but they're, they're not releasing the the design to the public. They're 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 not open sourcing it. They said they would be open to being bought for forty million dollars. But the problem oh, here wow. is like they have one of and it's that price is going up. There's a there's a, a doctor who's been trying to reach out to them called Kamal his name's Kamal Kalsi and he has been kind of spearheading this campaign to like get them to like, like we could make these in bulk. We could get these to produce all over the world like let's let's do it this is such an easy solution um he, he had a, an article that came out in los angeles times recently he's been talking about it a lot um i'm in communication with him we just can't we we need to like reverse engineer that thing we need to get it into 
people's hands because it seems to be the simplest solution. Um, doesn't need much. You just plug it into oxygen, turn a few knobs, and it works. Right. So open source uh, project, basically, and that's how just just like the three D printed masks, right? Just that's how you can get all these designs at, at, in at scale from various various people in the world, right? Yeah, uh, and that's kind of the idea. Um, but I I want to say again, I'm a little bit skeptical that uh, a, a a ventilator that's made by in like a community way is is going to be right. safe. <laughs> right, that, that 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 more more so than a mask. I mean, the mask is super important too, right? But the ventilator is like specifically designed to save that person's life, like right now, real time. So yeah, I mean, that's that, that's kind of scary. That like, yeah, hey, we're hooking you up to the, this DIY one that we just got it delivered. You know? Yeah, and 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 doctors have to be able to operate. And nurses have to be able to, have to work in a hospital environment. There's just so many requirements requirements to making a ventilator. And some would say like, well, is it better than nothing? I'm like, it could be so much worse than nothing in some ways. Like you could blow up people's lungs. You can cause all sorts of damage, um, which takes away resources from people who are uh, really sick and doctors have to go fix those problems with a faulty machine made. Right, right. And, and that's kind of where my, I mean, people are still working at the very early stages of ventilator design. Um, and we'll see what comes out. Uh, I'm I'm optimistic, but I think you have to be quite skeptical. Uh, it's probably healthy to be skeptical. Right, right. Yeah. So, so what is your take on uh, what is your take on the whole situation? I mean, uh, you're not sitting here dwelling on the situation. You're actually like doing something about it. You're putting this into action. You're you're making these 3D masks. You're trying to reverse engineer a ventilator. I know that your business kind of like just went down by the wayside uh, when this happened. Everyone canceled contracts, just like a lot of people out there. So, like, what, yeah. what's your whole, what's your take on, you know, on, on this? People aren't taking it seriously. Um, let me just hear your, your take on it. I think a lot of people feel out of control. We're all locked in our homes. We don't really know when the, the, the stay-at-home orders are going to be lifted. Um, a lot of people are watching their bank accounts, their 401ks evaporate, and they want to do something. They want to be part of uh, hopefully, maybe, possibly uh, the solution or a, a solution in, in battling this. And I think that's where uh, where a lot of people are coming from. They're trying to make something. They want to be helpful and they want to feel like they're doing something instead of just sitting at home. You know, that's, yeah. that's what, I think that's what's going on behind all this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely, uh, definitely uncertain times. Uh, shout out to JP out there, Todd Scarborough, Chance Post, Carrie Noel. Um, Todd says, uh, "Is crowdsourced hardware production possible?" Um, so I think I think you just answered that, but if you want to uh, shed some more light on that, Gusta. Uh, I don't. In in. A lot of people have 3D printers. If it takes 20 hours to print three masks, you're, yeah, I don't know how many 3D printers are out, in the, out there in the world, but it, right. it, it takes quite a while. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm not, I'm skeptical. This is, this is like plan, like I said, plan C, plan D. This is when nothing else is working. This is the last solution you should be turning to. Um, this isn't going to be, we're not going to be flooding hospitals with 3D printed masks. Uh, we can flood hospitals with other things like 3D printed visor headbands. And people are making these little headbands for face shields and they put a piece of plastic in front. This is like, you can make those really fast. Um, and I see that being a potential solution. You can 3D print other small objects, but something as complicated as you know this shape, um, I don't see these being made at scale. What's better, what would be better is if somebody you know made an injection mold for this. Um, or uh, a vacuum form for this. That that process, like this, is a prototype which you could then turn into another main, uh, use another manufacturing process to make this in bulk. But like, no one, not, we don't have. A, I don't have a vacuum former or an injection molder at my house. <laughs> right, right. And you have a three D printer, so yeah, you work with what you have. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's that's what I want to stress. It's like this is not. For all the news articles that people are getting, like for all the news about 3D printer masks, it's a little bit hype, majorly hype. <laughs> yeah, got it, got it. But 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 you think um, for you know for 
for these purposes, the 3D printed mask that you have here, I mean, this is like version what three or four or five or six. Uh, this is the one that you think is would be the would be the best in your opinion, the best Plan D. The, the be I I feel pretty confident about this Plan D and and the filters that we're using and the the way it works and how you fit it to your face and how you stare you know disinfect it. Um, I feel I feel good about that because there's a lot of masks that have been going around that don't answer each of those questions. So how do we how do we do those things? What kind right. of filter material should we be using? So. Yeah. And and that that filter material on the front, if I'm not mistaken, I saw the post, and maybe maybe I can share the post up here. But that's basically like a HEPA filter that you could that you could buy from Home Depot or Lowe's that you could install in your house for your your air ducts, right? So it's basically that material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we we talked to some uh, we talked to some people who work with HEPA materials, and they're like, not the greatest, but if you have no other option, better than. Uh, better than uh, using a cotton T-shirt or something along those lines. Right, right. Um, so, I can't, I can't say it enough because people are like, "Oh, this is the panacea. This is going to solve all our problems." I'm like, eh. "No, the real N95 mask is going to solve all the problems." <laughs> Yeah, so we the real the real issue is we need to amp up production of the N95 masks, and and how many people are how many companies are actually qualified to make that to make those masks? So that's the thing. If you kind of look at this mask, there's like a there's a there's a there's a kind of material inside of it. There's it's called uh, glass blown polypropylene um, that's in here. It's kind of like fiberglass, like that that consistency, and and those interwoven fibers are very very tiny. A machine that makes those is cost about four and a half million dollars. And it's pretty specialized where you're you're sort of blowing uh, plastic and making these super duper thin strands and weaving them together, kind of like cotton candy. And that's that's what's going on inside of this mask. And um, that material is, is hard to get. The machines are expensive and pretty specialized. And so the companies that make these masks are kind of working to make more machines and gear up their production, adding more shifts. 3M is really interesting, actually, because they, they have a bunch of machines that are on standby for surge uh, demand. And they, they've they been firing up those machines so more masks can be produced. Um, the problem of, of mass production will be will be solved. It's just going to take some time. And in, in the interim, um, because frontline hospital workers, frontline, even people out buying groceries, things like that, everyone on the front line needs something. It's better than nothing. That's for sure. Right, right. So, so if you don't have access to a 3D printer at home, uh, majority of us don't. Uh, I would say, how how would you? Is there a place? Is there like a community 3D printer in local areas? Generally speaking, like where would you find a 3D access to a 3D printer? Uh, you can reach out to your local maker community. Um, there's a lot of of maker uh, Facebook groups, things like that, that are making uh, that have access to 3D printers. Uh, you can reach out to your universities. Uh, community college libraries. Uh, most of these people have 3D printers around. Um, they may be closed, but maybe they'll make an exception and open up to get some things rolling. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, find your neighborhood nerd. That's uh, that's what that's what that's what I am. Yeah. <laughs> go, nice. go give him a go give him a call. You know, bacon some cookies, and maybe you'll get a mask out of it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I imagine. Uh, I imagine if you have a three D printer and you are, know about this, your printer's probably going for the next indefinitely, just making masks and you know one, what well, one every three every twenty twenty hours. So, you know. my printer and the settings I'm printing at, other people have printers that can print faster. Sure. Uh, other have printers that can print slower. I've seen these things be printed in as little as uh, I think four hours. Uh, okay. I'm printing it. I'm printing in settings that are trying to get the best. Um, finish and things like that because I'm, you know, right, right. I'm trying, so I'm trying, I'm trying, these are these are sort of models that are that I'm using to to test the design and prototype uh, for the documentation that I'm building around it. Got it, got it. Okay. Uh, so you said the the site is costa.is/slash/covid. Um, yep, C O V A D. Okay, let me pull that site up now, um, and then share the screen here. So one second, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, 
Okay, so here's the uh, here's the protocol for three D printing masks. So, uh, and you the, you said that you're up you were updating this daily. Yeah, it was just, as new information is coming out, people are adding and adding and adding uh, detail. Oh yeah, I see. You have you have a bunch of people that are in this that have access to this. That they so this is really much a very much a community effort right now. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fielding that and adding those details, but for the most part, I, I feel there's not a lot more being added to this so far. Like you see there, you have to kind of measure your face, make sure you're printing up the small, medium, or large, which size face is fit. Um, that was that's like one question. A lot of people are just printing out you know this one size, but this will not fit uh, a small person's face. You're going to have air gaps all over the the top, which makes it ineffective. Right, right, yeah, okay. So all, all the steps are here. So all the mm -hmm. steps are here. So like w with the material, like it tells you exactly where to buy the material at too. Yeah. So. Uh, yep. So you can click all those links. It's a lot of Amazon li links um, to all the different materials that you can be using. That's one of the other problems with um, the some of these some of these this this expectation that you're gonna know where to get the, the parts to make these things. I try to get everything sourced on Amazon, so it's really easy to just buy one and make it. Right, right, yeah, absolutely. Uh, even, even though, even though you will be probably subjected to like two to three week delay on shipping right now, but still, um, yeah. it's nice that you have it all there. You can get a lot of this stuff from your hardware store, things like that. So there's, um, you know, I, I put Amazon links so at least people know what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this looks like a highly involved process, man. Is this this how, is this how you sterilize it? The blow dryer too, no. or this is part of the the making well, process. When it comes out of the printer, um, it may fit most faces, um, and you could do that by putting on your face and sucking in after covering the hole, so yeah. you, you can kind of feel it making a seal on your face, um, which isn't that is the most limited test, by the way. That's not basic compared to what should really be done. Right, right. Which is like like a fume hood with sugar water and you're breathing in, trying to make sure you're not tasting so that's what should be done. any sugar. Yeah. But anyway, the using the um, using the hair hair dryer, what you're doing is you're sort of uh, making the, the places that'll be touching your face, you're melting them a tiny bit and so that you can put it to your face and squeeze and and make uh, make it fit just a little bit better. The fitment is probably one of the most challenging parts because any air gap and the mask is yeah. the mask is rendered useless yeah yeah uh i mean i mean how how airborne i mean when they say this thing is airborne um but it's also uh from my understanding it's also like a, a, a bigger bacteria so uh, that's why the even the hepa filter would block it out right um can you maybe shed some light there because i think there's a lot of i mean I, i'm even confused there's a lot of confusion about that the virus itself is smaller than um, than than what a, a HEPA filter can block. However, most of the time, a um, the virus is is inside a little layer of spit or saliva when it's spit out from people's mouth and a cough or a sneeze or just someone breathing, um, which is bigger than the size of the virus that's encapsulated, and that's what kind of gets caught in the mask. And you'll see HEPA filters; they'll have you know, in their marketing, else they can block viruses, and that's kind of what they mean by that. Um, so that's that's kind of how that's that's how they work. Um, and and the sizing is, you know, they're still are like, is it aerosolized or is it only in spit? You know, it's, they're still talking about what it, what it is and what it isn't. Wow! Wow! Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll put the link out here for anybody to uh, to go and make their own three D printed mask. Uh, if you do end up making one, let me know because uh, I definitely want to want to know about this. Um, I mean, this is this is very involved, but um, but you know, pro probably the likeliness of us being able to go on Amazon and order an N ninety five mask anytime soon. Uh, what which, what are your thoughts on that? Pretty unlikely, I, I assume. Uh, as they should, I think. Mass should be going to first responders. I think of that's what's happening. Um, I think there's also going to be a lot of like bogus masks coming out <laughs> that don't have the the right materials. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a while till we can easily get our hands on masks. I don't, I don't know how long, but 
project time. Man, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, uh, what? Uh, anything else that I missed? Like uh, anything that that I should have asked you about? Um, I just want to stress for people: it's the plan B, it's not the panacea. I I want people to know that there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of like we're building the plane while we're flying it, and yeah, so right. you need to be really wary of that and take great caution. Um, if you know things that we don't know, we'd love to know. Um, math technology is actually, like, this seems simple, like, yeah, it's a math, but the amount of R&D that went into making this math is exceptional. And, and so uh, all of these projects, people are using their, the, the best knowledge that they have to make something that hopefully they can be of some system. Um, and that I, I believe this math is better than a, a cotton t-shirt. Uh, and worse than the N95. Can I quantify? No, I can't. But I wish I could. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, appreciate it, man. And then, uh, so uh, at this part, I just I have I have some questions that I generally ask uh, every guest uh, on under normal circumstances, but uh, I think it's still relevant here to kind of uh, peek inside your head a little bit. So. Um, this is, it's kind of funny now, but uh, this is a word that I've been asking all, all year long before all this, but pick one word to summarize 2020. Um, what, what, what would that word be for you at this point? Already? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit show. I guess that one word. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that, question, that question was meant to be, uh, you know, early on, earlier on uh, in, uh, you know, a lot of people said growth. Uh, a lot of people said uh, adapt. Uh, I think adapt is very fitting right now because that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah. There's something that we said about the community that's coming together. Maybe, I don't know, a word for community other than community, but there's it's kind of exciting how people are working together across cultures around the world. Uh, right. Yeah. Just, just, just accelerating the technology right now because we have to. Accelerating the use of it. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, what is uh, what's one of your favorite business books of all time? Um, I just finished the Twenty Two Immutable Laws of Marketing. I yeah? yeah, you like that one? Yeah, I've been reading a lot about marketing. Stuff. What, what was your big takeaway from that one? Uh, it's, it's an art, it's more of an art than a science, and uh, yes, it is. That was, that's what something that was. was like, what? How does this work? Nice. Um, and if you could, uh, if you can go back in time and tell you, tell your eighteen year old self something, what would you say? You're doing a great job. Yeah. You're gonna be just fine. You're, just gonna, you're gonna be just fine. Nice man. I, I love it, man. Um, and then, uh, who's a who's a top celebrity personality or CEO that you wish you could meet? Bill Gates. Bill Gates? Like, I like Bill Gates. Okay. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I love I love how he has all this business experience, built a great company, but at the same time has a huge heart from philanthropy and doing good good in the world. And I think that those you look at someone like Steve Jobs and like, okay, he made great company, awesome. But how did he instill values of creating a better world at the same time? People might argue with me. He's like no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on, on, what, on what he's done. And uh, he even, even rounded up uh, Zuckerberg into the mix recently. Um, that was the headline that came out. So um, interesting to see what they, what they can do uh, with all that money and hopefully, hopefully uh, impact the healthcare sector right now. Yeah, hopefully. Because it's much needed. It's much needed. Cool. We're, watching, not... we're watching these companies right now. We're seeing like who, who's, who cares about humanity? Who doesn't? It's like a real test right now. Oh, it is. Um, yeah, I agree, one hundred percent. We're all on the, on the main stage right now to, for all to see. So, um, really, really interesting. Like when companies like you go on LinkedIn and you're still getting spammed, spam message by some people still trying to like sell stuff as as if as if none of this is going on. Like I had I got a cold call last week. Uh, somebody wanted to sell me co working space, and I said, "Are you are you joking?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you're. I hope you're joking. I mean, I'm not trying to be like completely insensitive to the fact that you still got to sell, but I, I hope you are joking about trying to sell me co-working space right now. 
you know? I've heard all these stories, so many stories of people being put in such dangerous positions in order to continue working. I've heard stories of people having to go into work for no reason, um, having like nurses and doctors, like not having PPE equipment and, and being like, we don't care, just go to work. And it's just, it's staggering how some, some businesses are putting the health and well-being of their employees at, they just don't care. Uh, just put them through the meat grinder. It's like, uh, you ever read The Jungle, Upton Sinclair? It's like about the meat packing industry back in, back in like, I don't know, 1800s or something. It's just like the same in 1900s, uh, and during the Industrial Revolution. And it just feels like echoes of, we don't care about humans. They're just here to do our bidding. Yeah, no, I know. It does feel like that, right? I mean, completely some of these some of these approaches are just completely tone deaf right um and i I get it everyone's scared right now and if you sell somebody said it like if you sell like if you sell flowers right now like if you're a florist like uh, i mean or if you're selling glass vases and you're hitting us up on email to to 50 percent off glass vases like who actually cares about glass vases right now you know it's like you know it's nothing personal it's just like come on right it's like, well, what? I mean, business got a business. I, I don't care. Right. I mean, they got, they got a, what are they supposed to do? Just go out of business? There's so many companies, my company's struggling. I don't know what to do. Well, I'm not supposed to send the email blast. Like, hey, you need someone prototype? Call me. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think people want things prototype right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It's really tough out there. Yeah, yeah Carrie said, uh, how about sign up for this conference or that conference? You know, yeah, I mean, uh, seeing that left and right. And there's so many conferences that were canceled, not getting refunds, things like that. It's like, on the one hand, I can empathize with conference organizers who probably shelled that money already. Yep. But on the other hand, like, can we do a little bit? Like, I tried to cut deals with my clients. They're, they're you know, they lost all their money in the stock market, whatever. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, why didn't you have some money set aside? Because you already knew you had a bill coming from me. You know, right. try to give them discounts, things like that. No one's really having it. Everyone's sort of holding on to what they have because they're they're nervous, they're scared, they don't know when they're going to get money again. I think we need maybe adjust that thinking, um, be a little more generous. Absolutely, absolutely. I think so, man. I think so. Um, uh, and, and last up, man. Uh, uh, what, what do you do on on the daily to keep yourself dialed into everything, like personal habit that you do? Uh, I'm actually trying to read the news less because yeah. I don't, yeah, I think, I think it's not contributing to my sanity or mental health. Pan- um, panic reading. So there's panic buying and then there's panic reading. Yeah. I think a lot of, I think a lot of people are, uh, if the news cycle is just, it's daunting what's going on right now. It's just, we added 20,000 more cases today. We, it's, it will be the same story tomorrow and the next day and the next day for quite a while. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to read a little, little less news. I'm trying to stay busy making things. That's what makes me happy. And uh, anybody who has some passion that they know about, they make music, they they, they, they draw, they like to read. I think that they should double down on those passions. Uh, they, they, pod, they podcast, right? Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think you should. This is the time. This is the time to double down on those passions and just kind of go all out and go all into it. Um, because to keep your, to try to keep some, some level of sanity. Right. Um, are you, are you hold up by yourself or you hold up with a roommate or you hold up with your family or uh, my girlfriend's here. Uh, yeah. she, she came in from Wisconsin pretty <laughs> we're yeah. now We're not doing the whole living together situation. We had, <laughs> yeah, right. It's a brand new thing, but, uh, we call it our, our Corona. <laughs> Corona. Corona. <laughs> Corona man. I like it. Uh, I like that. You know, oh. We got kind of thrown into this. It was either that or be alone, and and I think neither of us wanted. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't even imagine. Like, I completely empathize with people, and I can't even imagine just like being uh single and alone in like a the smallest apartment in like New York or something right now. Like, I can't. I can't even. Can't. I can't even imagine that right now. And New York is like the scariest place to be in the on the planet right now. Mm-hmm. I, I, I encourage all your viewers if they have a someone who's elderly, someone who's um, you know, single, 
they don't have getting any human interaction, give them a little extra attention. I've been doing that and calling all my single friends, making sure they know that they're loved. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, great you're trapped at home. it's a great time to do that, man. Uh, t- Todd, Todd had a question for you. He said, uh, is, uh, are you head down on masks? Are you open to other projects? He has a partner working with defense and they may need some design work. I love, love some design work. I'm open to all sorts of projects. This, this has just been a, 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 a filler of time. I want to feel useful. I want to help people if I can. Um, and that's, that's what I'm doing. So it, yeah, any projects that I'm by the way, you can email me kg at K-O-S-T-A dot I-S. Uh, kg at kosta.is. Kg, I'm going to type that in the comments. Kg at costa.is. Yeah, yeah, kg at costa.is. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you uh, jumping on on the, on the air with me and uh, and sharing this uh, for the world to see, for people um, to to get uh, this 3D mask in their hands if they want it, if they have the means. Um, and uh, stay safe out there, everyone. Yeah, stay safe. Thank you so much for, for bringing China Light on me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, appreciate it, man. Um, hope hope you guys will stay safe. Are you guys, are you guys staying inside, inside uh, exclusively? You, you have to make runs to the grocery store. You're doing deliveries. Today is the big grocery run day. Got a really long list. Uh, got a lot to buy. We're going to be wearing gloves and masks, and that's how we're going to do it. It's gonna be, we went to Costco three weeks ago, and it was just scary it's scary out there guys it this is. stuff lives on plastic for three days like you just don't touch your face it's just, it lives on plastic for three days yeah it lives oh. on plastic for three days there's 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 been i just read some i'm not gonna say it because i haven't looked at it with people but there's like it, it's living for a long time and it's scary like all the surfaces that need to be wiped down make sure that it's actually gone it's just awful yeah, I, so are you guys are you guys doing any uh, any takeout stuff? Are you afraid of takeout? Um, like delivery. We not- are, yeah, no, I know. I'm here. Uh, it's like when an Amazon box comes, I'm like, has it been sitting outside long enough? It, it, right. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, and, and, and if you and if it sits out there too long, it gets stolen. <laughs> So you're like, ah, oh, do I bring it in? Do I let it sit there? You we almost like need to have like a like a sanitization room like leading to each house now. Um, and I was I was talking to my wife. I'm like, is I wonder if there's a way you could use like UV like harsh UV lights like like toothbrushes you use these like uh, use them like the one of the one of the newer toothbrushes has like this like base station that you put your toothbrush in there and it like shoots harsh UV lights at it to sanitize it. I'm like. Could they do some? Could they potentially do something like that on this? I don't even know. You know, I actually I, built something for a client a while ago, which they wanted to disinfect their toys. This was four or five months ago, and they wanted like a little, you know, like a tent that goes up for food on a picnic table, like a little like fly net. They wanted a. Yeah. They built a, a big UV lamp that fits inside one of those. You could fold it up, and we built <laughs> built that for him so that he could put it over his toys because his kid was getting sick all the time. Um, I, I recently thought he was like looking for someone to draw up a patent patent drawing <laughs> uh, because it was like now this is, a, this is a hot time for something like that. A, a doctor reached out to me; they wanted to make like an I, iPhone sanit- sanitizing device to make sure that the phone can be sanitized. Is a great place for stuff to do bacteria to be on. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's 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 a lot. I mean, we we went to we went. To CVS, we went to pharmacy, get some medications, and that was just horrifying. We bought some chocolates and stuff. We're like, what? Just, just go wipe all this down with like, alcohol. I have a ton of alcohol because you need it for, for uh, 3D printing, a different kind of 3D printing. So luckily, I can just burst everything down. I, I can't, people are getting this. My friend, my friend in New York, um, there's a doctor there. I called her a couple weeks, like last week, and she said, Forty uh, percent of her patients are under the age of forty. I was just like, wow. like, uh, like in the ICU. A lot of wow. people, we were kind of we were kind of told like, oh, this is something that happens to old people. This is something that you have to have a comorbidity, like you'd be overweight, have diabetes. It's like, yeah, I think that's your increases your odds of dying. Unfortunately, however, young people are not safe from this as well. 
uh, still, the, the, you, the odds are still there. Like that stuff increases your odds, but the odds are still there. They're still against you to some degree, no matter yeah, what. And, and, and that's something that I can't stress enough. Like we kind of, like, I'm healthy, but they, we've seen these people who, you know, totally healthy, totally fit people just on to their knees. Uh, yeah. My friend, I had a friend named Ian who had it. He was out of, uh, he was a public defender and they shut down the court. They shut down the, uh, uh, the, the, the jail, he, he was patient wow. zero in his community. And he, but he was out for a solid two weeks and could not move, was just totally sick. And I mean, we're getting, all these stories are coming out. I'm sure everybody by the end of this is going to know somebody who had it. Hopefully you won't know anyone who passed from it. But hopefully, yeah, hope, hope so. Take it very seriously. Because yeah. the information that we have, I, I can't stress enough. Like, we're building the plane more while we're flying. Um, when it comes to masks, which we're learning as we're doing it. It's the same thing for this virus. We don't know that much about it. We don't know like the data that came out of China. A lot of the, there was a study that, that was sort of guiding a lot of people, but you know, it's the, the data from Italy is different. The data from the United States is different. So we're, you know, we don't know who gets sick, how, we're, we're learning. We're learning a lot as quickly as possible. It doesn't mean don't trust the institutions that are creating this information, creating the information. They're just using the best knowledge that they have at this moment in time. Right, and, right. And how, and how much knowledge don't we have? We have a lot more th that we don't have than we do, which is the scary yeah. part, right? Yeah. And I, I don't, that's, we're, we're continually learning. It's like you, uh, you look at the news, you might hear something new. Okay, and be like, were they lying before? No, we're still learning. It's a brand new virus. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, what do you what do you think about the the? Uh, I mean, your opinion of the flip flopping back and forth of, hey, this thing's going to be over by the end of April. It's going to be over in twenty twenty one. Like, I, I, who knows, right? But what what's your what's your current opinion on it? We won't hold you to it, but um, um, like, I, yeah. Uh, well, first off. Anybody who's not a medical professional, I'm not listen to them. Right, I exactly. Their, I don't want their opinion. And you shouldn't really listen to me either because I'm not a medical professional. I think of course. A, of course, yeah. I, I, I believe in experts. Some of our uh, leaders don't. So. <laughs> right, but, but, what, what, but what is your opinion based off of all the opinions you've already heard? Right, and the ones that you believe. For, I think we're going to be locked down for three months. I think different communities are going to be, uh, it, it, unless... I think the I think the big cities are going to get hit the hardest. I think they're going to get actually quarantined. They're going to need to be. I think uh, when Donald Trump says something like "we're quarantining New York City" or "we're thinking about it" and then doesn't, you see this massive flow of people out of the city and they take the disease and they go to their local communities wherever they are. Um, and and that's the way America is. We we believe in freedom and it's a great thing. But freedom to travel, freedom to move between states, but that just means freedom <laughs> to also infect everyone. Um, Florida hasn't shut down their beaches the last time I looked. Uh, spring break was crazy down there. I think we're going to watch in the next, I think it's two weeks, Florida is going to be on the front page. They have a much elderly population. I think it's going to be really bad in Florida. Um, I think New Jersey and New York are already seeing that, that it's bad over there. Um, but those are those those are those are cities and, and states that had a lot more uh, cases early on, and, you, and, and they're not at the peak yet. And you're going to start seeing it happen in Louisiana, Ohio. Uh, those are like two two weeks behind. So the, the caseload is growing. If, if you're in a state or a community that hasn't initiated some sort of lockdown or or you know stay at home order. Be very nervous. Be very nervous in those places because it just. Yeah. I'm in North Carolina, and North Carolina today, the governor today is the first day of the state home order. And oh really? I'm, yeah, I'm very happy that we're doing it. We watched California have a stay at home order, order happening very early on. Um, mm -hmm. you, you'll know if, if a stay at home order worked. You'll know if all these things worked. If no one, if if no one gets sick, it's, it'll be the most anticlimactic thing. You'd be like, why do we do this? What's yeah. the point? Right. That's because it works. And so I'm, 
if you don't, you're going to see what happens. And, and, and New York City is a kind of prime example. No, I mean, no criticism. They're doing their best. There was this, you know, this balancing act between, yeah, like, do we take take our economy or do we, you know, is this as bad as we think it is? Right. Anyway, Plus, people will never bump with each other there too. So, like, e- even if you're staying at home, like, you're in the hallway of your apartment complex is everybody else. It's like it, you can't. How how far away can you stay from people when you live on top of each other? They're saying uh, it lives in the air for maybe thirty minutes. So, if someone has a sneeze in an elevator. Uh, Wait, <laughs> that's, that's new data to me. So, it lives in the air for thirty minutes. At least something like that. There, there was the like it's aerosolized and it, it can stay hanging in the air. Um, there's, if you ever, if you look at your breath uh, on a cold day, when you breathe out uh, and you can see your breath, what you're seeing is uh, water vapor from your mouth. Every one of those breaths can have, will, will have probably more, more than likely uh, the virus in those, in the water vapor that's coming out of your mouth. So think of yourself on a cold day However far your breath is traveling, that's how far the virus is going. Wow. And, uh, and it, can live, that, it can live in that for approximately 30 minutes is what, what we think. Last, last I checked, I haven't looked at this, this problem. It's like this information is changing all the time. So don't quote me on that one because uh, I'm not in the, sure. I'm in the 3D printer maker world. But uh, um, yeah, 30 minutes. So you're, you're following someone around. You're, you're, you know, that's why New York is so, it's, spreading so easily because people are in such close confined spaces. It's living on, it lives on surfaces for a long period of time. It can live in the air. Like I said, you're in an elevator. Well, like a lot of these buildings, you just have to take an elevator. So what are you supposed to do? If you don't have an app, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, so I, I, hope, I hope that your uh, prediction of three months um, is the minimum. So I, I, I hope for the economy's sake and for people's sanity. Um, but you know, lives are the most important thing here. So just limit limit those trips to the grocery store as much as you can, especially if you don't have a mask. Every time you go out there, it's, it's, you're risking it. So yeah, don't touch your face. Don't uh, just, just be careful. Just be careful out there. Cool. Well, hey, man, I appreciate it. I've tried to end this thing like three times now, but we this conversation <laughs> keeps on getting so good. So uh, we haven't, but uh, but I do appreciate that. Um, thanks for uh, jumping on. I appreciate it, Costa. My pleasure. Thank you so much for, for inviting me, including me. Thanks to your viewers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for, first time we met too. So I, I appreciate that. And my wife speaks highly of you. So uh, maybe we'll have to chat again offline. Appreciate it, man. I'd love, I'd love that. I give, give my best to her. Cool. All right. Thanks, Costa. And, and thanks, guys, for tuning in today. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, guys.